This video provides a brief overview of the key concepts covered in Chapter 8, Facility and Work Design. Have you ever been in a business and wondered why it's laid out the way it is? Facility layout refers to the specific arrangement of physical facilities to facilitate the production or provision of a good or service, and a lot of thought goes into it. There are four major types of layouts employed in the manufacturing of a product. First, there's the product layout, which is an arrangement based on the sequence of operations that's performed during the manufacturing of a good or the delivery of a service. Here's an example of what a product layout might look like for a wine manufacturer. A product layout is designed around a single product. It may be adaptable to a slightly modified or different product such as wine or cider, but not for something substantially different such as oil refining. The second type of facility layout is a process layout which consists of the functional grouping of equipment or activities that do similar work. Here's an example of what a process layout might look like for a machine shop. A process layout is flexible and designed to handle many different products. The third type of facility layout is a cellular layout, which is based on self-contained groups of equipment called cells needed for producing a particular set of goods or services. Here's an example of what a cellular layout might look like for a manufacturer. Cellular layouts facilitate the process of families of parts with similar processing requirements. The fourth type of facility layout is fixed position, which consolidates the resources necessary to manufacture a good or deliver a service in one physical location. Houses, ships, and buildings are all built in a fixed position layout. Now when it comes to service organizations, they're very flexible and can rely on product, process, or cellular layouts depending on the nature of the service being provided. This is a great visual to help highlight the major differences between the four major layouts with respect to demand volume, equipment utilization, potential of automation, setup requirements, flexibility, and type of equipment. For example, product layouts are geared for higher demand, whereas fixed position layouts are very low demand. Process layouts are more flexible than product layouts. The next concept in the chapter is about designing product layouts. A very important and very common type of product layout is an assembly line, which is a layout dedicated to combining the components of a good or service that has previously been created. Techniques to group tasks among workstations in an attempt to distribute the workload as equally as possible is known as assembly line balancing. The next topic in the chapter is related to designing work process layouts which are concerned with the arrangement of departments or work centers relative to each other. To effectively design facilities, workplaces, and jobs, managers need to determine the times to perform the various tasks and work activities. This includes engaging in work measurement, which is a systematic procedure for the analysis of work and determination of something called the standard time required to perform tasks in a process. The standard time is a reasonable estimate of the time that's needed to perform a particular task. Work measurement has a number of uses, which includes estimating workforce and equipment capacity, identifying task times for assembly line balancing, establishing budgets, determining what new work procedures will cost, evaluating time and cost trade-offs among process design alternatives, establishing wage incentive systems, monitoring and evaluating employee performance and productivity, and providing accurate information for scheduling and sequencing. Work measurement relies on time studies, which involves the calculation of the standard time by observing a task with the use of a stopwatch and analyzing the data. There are six basic steps involved in time studies. The first is to define each task that comprises a job or work activity. Second is to measure and record the time needed to perform that particular task. Third, rate the employee's performance of each task. Fourth, compute something called the normal time for each task. Fifth, determine allowances for fatigue, personal time, unavoidable delays, etc. And sixth, determine the standard time by adjusting for that allowance. The next concept is about workplace and job design. Not only is it important to effectively design the overall facility layout, but it's equally important to focus on the design of individual workstations and the jobs performed by the workers. Here's where we can ask six relatively basic but very important questions to help us design an efficient workspace. Who will use the workspace? How will the work be performed? What technology is needed? What must the employees be able to see? What must the employees be able to hear? And what environmental and safety issues need to be addressed? Here's an example of the workplace design for a pizza preparation station. 
you'll probably notice that it's quite similar to the sandwich preparation area at a subway. Workplaces are designed specifically so workers can perform their jobs as safely and efficiently as possible. A job is a set of tasks an individual performs. Job design is the activity of determining specific job tasks and responsibilities, the work environment, and the methods by which the task will be carried out to meet the goals of the operations. Jobs are normally not static, they're flexible and may need to be modified in response to changes in the product, working environment, or even the customer. Job enlargement is the horizontal expansion of a job to give the worker more variety, although not necessarily more responsibility. An example of this would be where employees on an assembly line at a Honda manufacturing plant are trained to perform two or three different jobs throughout the day to avoid quality fatigue. Job enrichment, on the other hand, is the vertical expansion of job duties to give the worker more responsibility. This may or may not include a promotion to a higher level, however. One of the most important aspects of workplace design in today's society is safety, and one of the ways safety is considered in the work environment is through the concept of ergonomics. Ergonomics is concerned with improving productivity and safety by designing workspaces, equipment, instruments, computers, workstations, etc. to take into account the physical capabilities of people. Workplace safety and the ethical treatment of workers is not just important to a particular company, it should also be emphasized throughout the entire global supply chain. The Ethical Trading Initiative, or ETI, seeks to address a number of potential work-related issues, such as the freedom of an individual to choose their employment, safe and hygienic working conditions, elimination of child labor, and humane treatment, among others. Despite advances in mechanization, robotics, and even artificial intelligence, most products are still manufactured by people, and services, which are experienced by people, are also provided by people. Thus, companies must ensure they develop safe and efficient facilities, workplaces, and jobs.